Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today I'm going to be doing another portrait um, over an abstract and this is inspired by Dina Wakeley from <clears throat> the Cloth Paper Scissors Faces magazine. Um, it has six or seven different artists who um, show you lots of different ways to draw different portraits and this portrait is based on the instructions from Dina Wakeley. So obviously with Dina Wakeley she loves her acrylic paints and she loves her abstracts. So what I'm doing is just dotting on colours in the background and making a sort of abstract. You can see I'm keeping my page really, really wet. So it's almost like watercolours in the background. I'm also being able to tip it up and sort of make the drips and dribbles and just add lots of different layers to this and then drying it off as I go. Now the good thing about acrylics is Obviously they're permanent once they're dry, so you can add layers over the top and you can make your layers more opaque. So for example, yellow, I want to make it a little bit more opaque, so instead of watering it out, I'm using my um, spatula to sort of scrape it out across the page, just to add that little bit more pop of a colour. You'll notice, also notice that um, I'm trying desperately to keep a little bit of white space on this page. Um, and again, that's one of um, Dina's real well, pet lover, pet hat, I'm not sure, but <laughs> she she um, loves having white space on pages. I think it does her head in when she sort of sees people like me doing mixed media who, you know, don't leave a scrap of it on the page. So I, I'm, I'm trying really hard because I'm trying um, to follow her instructions and I'm trying to resist filling up the page with colour. So I've sort of left it in that. Um, cross shape at the the top page, um, left hand side of my page and now I'm just going with the Stabilo oil pencil and sort of sketching out a rough shape. Now um, I'm kind of pushing myself here slightly in the fact that it's a kind of turned face which I've never really done before and I'm just drawing in the face mapping lines. So you divide your face in half then in half again and that's your eye line, then in half again that's your nose line and uh, half again underneath that and that's where your sort of lips go. With this as well I'm trying to draw a different eye shape, trying to put the lids of the eye in and following sort of her instructions so it's kind of like a an odd leaf shape and that's sort of the lids going in over the top. Um, with this I struggled sort of getting the eyes right. I think one of the issues I had with it was I made the wrong eye bigger, I think. Um, obviously if it's turned and you've got one side closer to the other, that side needs to be a little bit bigger. The eye needs to be a little bit bigger. Um, and I don't think I quite got that right. But I'm just playing around basically. One of the things I found with drawing faces, and you can get lots and lots and lots of um, tutorials on YouTube for this and um, on the internet, if you sort of divide up your page or divide up your eyes, the eye lines, and do the face mapping, it really does help a lot because at least you've got your features in the right place. There's lots of different ways to draw your eyes. Um, and your your faces. It depends if you're trying to be more realistic or not. With this one I suppose I was trying to be a little bit more realistic than the whimsical that I've been trying with. To be honest I think I like the whimsical because you've got a little bit more forgiveness if it doesn't look right. It's supposed to look a bit odd. But it's all trial and error and practice and obviously with everything the more you practice the better you're going to get. Um, I haven't done many faces in my life so it's certainly improved from the first ones I used to draw. There's an awful lot to improve on, but I'm having fun doing it. And having that abstract in the background and that bit of colour in the background, that sort of really helped, I think, just with my looseness. Now, one of the things that I thought I spoilt this with was doing the hair. The hair didn't look right. I didn't follow instructions for that. And I don't think there was any in the magazine for it either. It's more focusing on the face. So um, by putting the hair on, I think I, I spoilt it somewhat. But it, it, it worked in the end. 
Now, I am using the Stabilo All Pets, so one of the reasons I love working with it is because it is that water activated and you can sort of shift it and move it and you've got instant shading where you need to go. So you can see there working with the lips and the nose, I can sort of get some of that shading on the side of the face um, and make it as loose or as painterly as you like. So it sort of helps when you're drawing and it just gives a little bit more depth to your drawing I think um, without much effort. You can see there with the hair lines, just by adding a little bit of water over top, you get that sort of instant ink bleed out um, without doing very much. Same with the eyes there, just putting in that little bit of shadow and the shadow down the side of the nose, and that's just using the wet paintbrush. So um, it's a really handy tool to have. It's one that, again, I sort of came across through Dina Wakeley. She talks about it as her magic pencil, and I can see why, because as soon as you put water to it, just the ink just explodes out of the pencil. It's just amazing. So here I'm just playing around, trying to get the shapes properly, trying to be a bit more sketchy as well. Um, you can see my pencil's really, really blunt, so I do suggest having a good pencil sharpener around that you can sharpen your pencil as you go um, to make sure that, you know, you're getting those nice lines. Um, this is one of the things that I have been trying to play around with a little bit and it didn't work on this page because I didn't really let it dry enough um, and there wasn't a brilliant amount of tooth to the page. But going back in with some colour pencils and adding some shading. Um, I've never been a great one for colour pencils I have to say um, since I left school. I tend to use a lot of paint in what I do but I found particularly in the last few weeks um, working over the top of watercolours by adding the pencil over the top you get this beautiful texture to your um, paintings and I really like that so it's something I'm playing with a little bit more. The other thing I found that makes a huge difference when you're doing eyes is going back in with a white paint pen and just making the whites of your eyes really white and it just helps draw focus to your eyes and make them look slightly more realistic I suppose um, if, if that's how you want them to be. So I'm just going in again with the acrylic paint down the bottom just to add some colour to the clothing and then going back in with the pencil. This is what I mean about adding that texture. Even though I've sort of shaded that out, um, by putting those pencil lines in it just adds a little bit of something to it. It may not look correct, it may be too dark for the shadows but I, I like the effect of it. Uh, it looks I suppose more hand drawn and more deliberate by doing that and having those sort of catchy lines over it. So because I was really unhappy with the hair, I wanted to do something uh, with it. So I got one of these collage sheets, again from Dina Wakeley, with lots and lots of positive quotes on it. Now it's a really, the words on it are really, really tiny and I've never really used it in my art journals before because they are so small that they would get lost on a big page. So I thought what I'd do is cut them up into strips and sort of have them as positive quotes coming out from in and around her hair, just as something a bit different. I don't know if it works in the end, but um, I, I liked it. So I suppose that's what counts really, isn't it? Um, so I'm going in and trimming them up and then I'll just use some glue to stick them down. I don't think I actually end up using matte medium uh, the reason for that is because most of the picture is actually drawn with um, a water soluble pencil. I don't want it to move. So I'm just using some of this Connect glue, which is a bit like a PVA glue, and just gluing it down using that. Because it's so fine and it's kind of like hair and it's got the black in it, for once I'm actually not too concerned that you can see the whiteness and you can see how boxy it is. It is what it is. It's supposed to be little bits of words in her hair. People don't usually have words in their hair, so I don't mind that it doesn't look kind of realistic. And I'm sort of putting them in and around in different ways and different angles to represent hair strands. So as it goes, just trying to pick them up 
they're really fiddly as, as they get a bit smaller. Um, what This um, glue is a Connect glue, it's uh, from Gina K Designs. I haven't found it in Australia yet, but it's the most amazing glue. It glues down anything. So um, if anyone knows where to get it in Australia, please let me know because I've got two bottles of it and I think I need to get a few more. I've been using it to glue down chipboard and all sorts, so it's been really, really handy. Um, one of the things I like to do with my journal pages is to obviously journal in them. So this is just a quick bit of scribbly journaling about um, my journey drawing faces, whether I liked it or not, and what I enjoyed about the process. I'm also using the food ball quickly just to draw in some more sketchy lines, and um, particularly through the hair, just to add a little bit more interest. And that's it done. So it was a really fun page to do. It's pushing me outside my comfort zone by doing faces like this, but it's something that I want to keep improving on. I like having the abstract in the background of that just splash of colour. I thought that was added something really different to it. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.